Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. I brought um, this morning, typically I'll start uh, my time with the Lord in worship. And today I just took one of our worship flags and just started to sing to him. Uh, Lauren Daigle song, Dry Bones. I felt like this um, season uh, can f- start to feel after a very long year of many changes and uncertainty and um, wondering what's real and what's not. Uh, fear and anxieties and deaths in the family and unmet expectations and a lot of life circumstances can sort of catch up with us. It brought me into this place where I, in listening to Lauren Daigle's song, you know, um, she says, we cry out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. And she's referring to a time when Ezekiel was given a vision and he was over this valley of dry bones and, and God asked Ezekiel to prophesy speak to these dry bones that there's going to be flesh on them and that they're going to live again but Ezekiel did not have the power to put that life back into these dead bones these dry bones these dead hearts it took God to do that so those Ezekiel could prophesy that it's going to happen it took God's breath to make it happen and part of the part of the song says we cry out to dry bones the prophecy come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes let us see an army rise we call out to dry bones come alive the bridge goes into speaking about breathe O breath of God because that's what gives us the power to to come alive again and and as I took my flag we was just singing Breathe, O breath of God, now, breathe, O breath of God. And as I sang that out just throughout my home, I was mostly just offering myself up to God and just say, breathe, call my dry bones to come alive, call my dead heart to come alive. Because in this season, this past year, it could have made many of us weary. I was reading an article last night just on hope deferred. And how hard and heavy that is on our hearts. Hope deferred. And I was thanking the Lord this morning after worshiping with him and calling out for my dry bones to come alive and my dead heart to come alive and my hope deferred to be brought, to have God breathe some life into that again. And, and I said, thank you for the article speaking of hope deferred. I feel as if my heart is there, or at least being tempted to be there. I said, please breathe your breath over my dry bones, over my dead heart, to come alive. I need you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, renew in me a steadfast spirit of hope and joy. I need you, Jesus. And that's when he brought me into Colossians today. So I'm going to open that up. We're going to be in Colossians 1 and then right on to 2. So, and I believe that this first part of Colossians, at least what stood out for me, we're reading out of Our Daily Bread again, and this is written by Lisa um, Samra, and she titles it, It's Jesus. It's got a great story to go with that, but prior to that, as I was reading, I think what stood out for me, and as I was reading Colossians, was just verse 27, though it went on to read Verses 27 through 29 in Colossians 1, and I'll read that to you. But verse 27 is the one that stood out to me, and that's what I wrote in my journal. And here it speaks, verse 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He goes on to speak in 28. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. And 29 says, To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. All his energy is what stood out, which so powerfully works within me. Often I rely on my own energy and needing God, like I was crying out today. I need you to call my dry bones to come alive. I haven't been feeling weary. 
And, and what stood out to me the most in verse, um, or in chapter one was 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if you were not born of Jewish descent, which I was not, I stand on this, this gift that God allowed the Gentiles to come to know the mystery of Christ in us. Um, living in us like you don't have to depend on your own power for anything in um, and that he's that close when when we ask him into our lives when we start to live for him when we turn to him instead of false gods and idols it brings us into Colossians 2 and it's going to read 6 through 10 and it says so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord continue to live in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. And how many of us can be led astray with that? How many of us can grow weary because we're focused on that? See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And you have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority. I'm going to repeat 10. And you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and every authority. I wrote this out as the Lord was just, where am I finding, you know, my purpose and what I'm doing in this season? He's like, Janelle, you serve me, a living God. You don't serve anything else. You do not live according to anything else or what man, that one that one um, portion of Colossians when he says, so do not, so see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than Christ. You don't belong to that. You belong to a living God. You do not live according to that. You live according to me and my word. You serve me, the most holy king. It is by my strength, it is by my power and my purposes that you live and breathe and have your being. I live in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Continue to live in me, rooted and built up in me, strengthened in your faith and overflowing with thankfulness. How often when the circumstances of life can wear us down and hope deferred can can feel like despair and and isolation and um, like your joy has been just drained of you. Strengthened in your faith and overflowing with thankfulness. How to have that even when life circumstances are not favorable. He said, goes on to say, you have been given fullness in Christ. I am the head over every power and every authority. He brought me to the scripture in John 14, 20 through 21. On that day, you will realize that I am in my father. You are in me and I am in you. There's something incredibly profound about that scripture. Let that soak in. On that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you whoever has my commands and obeys them he is the one who loves me he who loves me will be loved by my father and i too will love him and show myself to him hold tight he says to me hold tight to me daily i will guide you through each day you are mine and i am yours i live in you christ in you the hope of glory so as I sat there and pondered, as I, you know, felt hope deferred and I felt as if my bones are dry and my heart is dead and I need him to breathe new life into me because his mercies are new every day. 
I went into the scripture or went into the devotion. God has chosen to make known the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Lisa titles this devotion, It's Jesus. It's out of our daily bread. You can download that app onto your phone or order these books on booklets online. She says, during the episode of a popular U.S. television talent competition, America's Got Talent, a five-year-old girl sang with such exuberance that a judge compared her to the famous child singer and dancer in the 1930s. He remarked, I think Shirley Temple is living somewhere inside of you. Her unexpected response was this, not Shirley Temple, Jesus. I marveled at the young girl's deep awareness that her joy came from Jesus living in her. Hmm. That our joy can come from Jesus living inside of us. Scripture assures us that the amazing reality that all who trust in him not only receive the promise of eternal life with God, but also Jesus' presence living in them through through his spirit. Our hearts become Jesus' home. Jesus' presence in our hearts fills us with countless reasons for gratitude. Out of Colossians 2, 6 and 7. He brings the ability to live with purpose and energy. He cultivates joy in our hearts and in the midst of all circumstances. In both times of celebration and times of struggle. Christ's Spirit provides hope to our hearts, that God is working all things together for good, even when we can't see it. And the Spirit gives a peace that persists regardless of the chaos swirling around us. With the confidence that comes from Jesus living in our hearts, we can allow his presence to shine through so that others can't help but notice. Her charge was this. What blessing of Jesus' presence in your life encourages you today? It encouraged me today that he is in me, that I'm, he's above all powers and all authorities, and that I can rest in him to breathe life and bring my dry bones alive again, to bring my dead heart alive again, and to give me hope so it's not deferred, and to return my joy. How might you share him as the reason for your hope and joy. And her prayer was this, Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Please help my life to reflect your presence. And that brought me to Jesus Calling. Sarah Young's book, you can order that book online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us. And today she writes, Come to me for understanding, since I know you far better than you know yourself. Hmm. I comprehend you in all your complexity. No detail of your life is hidden from me. I view you through eyes of grace, so don't be afraid of my intimate awareness. Allow the light of my healing presence to shine into the deepest recesses of your being, cleansing, healing, refreshing, and renewing you. Trust me enough to accept the full forgiveness that I offer you continually. This great gift, which cost me my life, is yours for all eternity. Forgiveness is the very core of my abiding presence. I will never leave you nor forsake you. When no one else seems to understand you, simply draw closer to me. Rejoice in the one who understands you completely and loves you perfectly. As I fill you with my love, you become a reservoir of love, overflowing into the lives of other people. So, my prayer for us is that our dry bones come alive and our dead hearts come alive and that out of the ashes he raises an army. Yeah. That out of the ashes he'll see an army rise as we rest in him, as we focus on him being inside of us, I'm in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you, above all power, above all authority. Our purpose is in him. He can renew, he can refresh, and he can bring us alive again. And that is today's piece of peace. God bless you.